Are you guys looking to improve your hitting game? You guys came to the perfect video. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the best tips and tricks on how to hit better, how to improve your game, and become a very good hitter in no time at all. Real quick before we get into the video, if you guys need anything done on your account, flawless, team affinity, programmer, just anything you guys need, stubs, world series, anything done, I have a full team of pros ready to grind on your account. Just DM me on any of my social medias or email me if interested. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, this is the part of the video where you guys really want to lock in and listen. I have a bunch of good, useful tips for you guys. So let's go ahead and get into the first thing I want to talk about, which is equipment. What equipment are you guys using? Are you guys using a 50-year-old TV? Or are you guys using a nice monitor with good refresh rate? All you guys should take a look at your equipment and make sure it's good and it's not setting you back. So number one is a good monitor. You guys want at least 120 hertz monitor. Everything I'm talking about will be in the top of the description if you guys want to take a look for yourself and go ahead and purchase it. I'll put everything that exactly I have in the description so number one make sure you guys have a good monitor if it's not 120 Hertz go buy a new one number two is a good controller now I do not know any good controllers for PlayStation but I do have a good one linked in the description for Xbox go buy that it's very good for response time so you guys aren't delayed whenever you do swing and lastly, you guys should get Control Freaks. Now, Control Freaks are the one piece that you guys do not have to have. It's not like a make or break. For example, a monitor, you guys have to have a good monitor. If not, you guys are going to be set back a lot. And a good controller is something you guys really should have as well, a good response time controller. But Control Freaks, I just like them. It helps you with slamming your PCI. If you guys watch a lot of these clips, I'm not slamming my PCI. My PCI is barely moving, and that's because I have Control Freaks and Precision Rings, which I linked both in the description. I would highly recommend both. If you guys have some extra money, they're pretty cheap i think it's like 20 bucks for both or 30 bucks for both definitely something i would recommend they are both very good products it's not something you have to have but if you guys have extra money and want to get better i'd recommend it 95 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel make sure you guys do so if you guys do enjoy the content here all right next up we have settings I'm not going to go too in-depth because it's very subjective. What I would recommend is hitting interface on zone and make sure you guys have nothing in the middle of your PCI. So when it says PCI enter, I like putting on none just because as you guys can see right here, you guys can see the ball a lot better. You guys can see the ball come to you. When you guys have those diamonds or the circles in the middle, it sometimes blocks the ball. It makes it harder for me to hit. So I don't know. A PCI is very subjective. You guys can try a bunch of different things. Um, that's what I use and also I put my PCI anchor on free all that does is put your PCI higher or lower if you guys use the anchor on the top or bottom which we'll talk about in a little bit later but that's what I use for uh, hitting settings all right so next thing you guys need is your hitting view on any of the strike zones I use strike zone high and I switch to strike zone I mix between those two but any of the strike zones are very good I'd recommend high and uh, the strike zone any of those are good make sure you guys switch to that you guys need a good view to hit it makes it a lot difficult when you guys use all these other ones make sure you guys use one of the strike zones all right so next up is your approach if you guys want to rewind that clip you guys weren't paying attention that pitch i just swung at was horrible it was a very hittable ball but something you guys should never swing at with no strikes unless you're just really in the groove of things so that right there is what a at bat should not look like you guys should be going up to the plate and having an approach and typically my approach is I never swing until I have one to two strikes. I don't care how, unless the ball is literally right where my PCI is, I am not swinging. I don't care if it's a strike. I don't care if it's a good pitch that I could hit. Unless if it's right where I want the ball, I am not swinging. That is usually my approach. With one or two strikes, I am not swinging unless it's like a pitch like right there. Just right where my PCI is, I'm going to crush it. So patience is key. What patience does is not only does it take the edge off you from slamming your PCI, from swinging at bad pitches, it forces the pitcher to pitch to you. Now, that is a huge thing with MLB The Show is make the pitcher pitch to you. Don't let the pitcher pitch at you. Make them pitch to you. So when you are not swinging, like watch these at bats. When I'm just not swinging at anything he's given to me, it's making him pitch right to me. It's giving him, it's making him lob up some good pitches to me. It's making him switch the pitcher, making him get a little nervous. And it's putting you in the driver's seat, not the pitcher in the driver's seat. So with that being said, it should be obvious. Take your walks. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if bases are loaded. You guys need just one hit. Take your walks. Always take your walks. That puts all the pressure on the pitcher. When you guys have a good eye, that will destroy most pitchers in MLB The Show. So making the pitcher pitch to you is going to make him tired. It's going to make a pitcher very tired very quick. As you guys can see, most of these clips, these pitchers get very tired very quick before they even get one out. Like right here, he's he, he hasn't even got one out. It's my first hit, and he's already super tired. This is the second pitcher of the inning. And I know it's BR, so obviously this guy's going to get tired a lot faster than a regular ranked game or something. But 
even if we don't talk about him getting tired, let's say they, they just never get tired, there's just no such thing as energy in MLB, you're still seeing all his pitches. So the more pitches you guys see, the more you'll be able to pick up what he's pitching. And you'll be able to pick up his pitch sequence as well. A lot of the times you'll realize that pitchers usually pitch like the same pitches or the same pitches in the same areas. Like if there's a pitch on the inside, you can be like, oh, that's probably a cutter. Or if there's a pitcher down the middle, it might be a changeup. Like you'll understand with what location, what pitch is going to happen. Or if he throws a changeup, you know the next pitch is going to be a fastball. So, stuff like that. When you guys take pitches, right here is what's going to happen a lot. Eventually, he's just going to get tired and just throw you a meatball right where you want it in an easy grand slam to take the lead. So going into every inning, my approach is I want the pitcher to pitch at least 15 to 20 pitches. If the pitcher pitches anything less than 15 pitches, in my opinion, I did bad. So I'm telling you guys, really work on that. Try to get the pitcher to pitch like 15 to 20 pitches and see how much better you guys play. Trust me, go try it out and see how much better you guys play with just that one little tip right there. All right, so the next tip is PCI placement. This is very subjective, so don't really take what I'm saying with pure perfection. You guys don't have to do this. This is just what I do and what works for me. So what I do is I put the PCI wherever the pitcher releases the ball. So right here, he's a right-handed pitcher. I'm putting my PCI anchor right in the top left, right where he releases the ball, and then I follow the ball to wherever it goes. So if it's a fastball, I'm not like if it's a high end in, or a high fastball right where he releases it, I'm not even gonna move my PCI. But if it's a curveball, I'm gonna follow it all the way down with my PCI to hit contact with it on the bottom of the zone. So that's what works for me is I just follow the PCI or I follow the ball with my PCI. So wherever the ball goes, that's where my PCI goes. That's what I do. I know a lot of people do a lot of different things. It may not work for you, but it works for me. And that's what I would try if I were you guys. Okay, so a lot of people want to know when to swing and how to swing. What button do I use to swing? Uh, I use normal swinging. So on Xbox, I use A. That's how I swing. I always use normal swing. Uh, if I'm really hitting really bad and I have like two strikes, sometimes I use contact swing. That's only if I'm really, really just not hitting the ball like, at all, like not even making contact really. Or if I'm playing like legend difficulty or really high difficulty. Uh, yeah, I'll use contact. But in BR and lower difficulty games, I'm... 99% of the time using normal swing. So it's something that really helped me is swinging after your foot hits the ground. This is a huge tip that really helped me out with my timing. So if you're someone that just does not seem like they can time the ball correctly, you guys are always late, always early, or if there's a, a slider, you're way early. So for me, I'm sure a lot of you guys as well, I, like that pitch right there is a pitch that will kill me <laughs> nine times out of 10, a slider, a cutter, uh, a slurve curveballs and curveballs not so much but more sliders so what really helps with the sliders is waiting for your foot to hit the ground so by the time your foot hits the ground you're like oh that's a, you can tell it's a slider you can tell it's a change up you can tell it's a cutter by the time your foot hits the ground but if you guys don't wait for your foot to hit the ground you you're not going to be able to tell and you're just going to swing early uh get too aggressive like oh it's a slider so i'm gonna swing now like no trust me try to wait until your foot hits the ground and watch how much better you guys hit the ball all right, so I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, don't forget to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. A bunch of shorts, videos, all that stuff will be on the channel for you guys. And like I said, if you guys need anything grinded on your account, you guys need some stubs, whatever you guys need, hit me up. I can definitely help you guys out for pretty cheap compared to what MOB, uh, the show, will offer you guys. And, uh, yeah, comment Home Run Mamba if you guys made it to the very end. As always, I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.